In the heart of every waterfowl hunter, there's a memory where it all began. For us, the waterfowl life started in the southern United States in the flooded timbers and expansive marshland. But as our journey unfolded, the quest for waterfowl led us beyond our home. The passion eventually takes us to different flyways, different countries, and beyond. We discovered that the culture of waterfowl transcends borders. And so, a daring dream took root. A dream to hunt 100 different species of waterfowl across the globe. We wanted to share the story of adventure and encounters with fellow hunters, each sharing the same passion as us. The landscapes will change, the species will vary, but the passion remains the same. One dream, a long road, 100 species. This is the Road to 100. All right, we're back on the home turf. The great state of Texas. God bless America, it is good to be back. And hey, we're back with Cole. What so up, that's yo? always a good time. Um, hunting down at Cadillac Creek with Toby and the, and the whole gang. Um, what do we got lined up for this morning, Buck? Um, big old lesser goose hunt. All right, let's get after him. Morning one here in uh, West Texas with Cadillac Creek, hunt with Toby and Cole. Um, got our spread put out. We've already uh, had a couple birds come in and do it. Still waiting for some birds to come off the water, come feed, but uh, we are set up and ready. And I'm going to officially check that lesser Canada off the list here. So that's one more subspecies of Canada goose that we're going to get knocked out. Um, met some cool dudes here as always. It's freaking awesome just getting to meet new people, all these cool places we go. But I'm gonna shut up because we got some birds coming. Shooting there, boys. Okay, everybody, we are day one here in West Texas with Toby from Cadillac Creek um, and our good buddy Cole that we hunted up with in Alberta. Um, it's been a great morning. What's really interesting about this region in the Panhandle of Texas is 90 to 95% of the wintering population of this Lesser Canada goose is found here in this region. So a great place to come and target these little birds. Um, they're mid, kind of mid body size compared to a lot of the other geese out there. You have your seven subspecies of graders and then obviously this is the larger of the the smaller lessers and the cackling geese. So really cool bird, a little bit shorter bill, smaller head, that white throat patch varies in size compared to the other subspecies uh, in the Canada goose family. And uh, yeah, just a really good one to check off the list. We're stoked to be here at home in Texas, hunting the lesser Canada. Now onto some sandhill cranes. You're gonna wanna be white. You think so? I think we'll do yeah. white. So, when you go travel and do this stuff like we are for Road to 100, and it's more than just about the birds, it's about the people, it's about the culture, it's about going to uh, try new foods, see new things. And in Amarillo, Texas, one of the, one of the main things you gotta go see is uh, Cadillac Ranch. And so, the history, the way I understand it, is in the 60s or the 70s, one of the local multi-millionaires here um, secretly decided that he was going to 
do this really random art project here in this field. And so a bunch of California hippies uh, and he got like 10 different models of Cadillacs and they are buried out here in this dirt nose down and um, over the last several decades people have come and spray painted these cars and they have like taken pieces of the cars off and so now you have these just like ragged out Cadillacs stuck in the ground but it's along Route 66 which we appreciate as Road to 100 because of the journey is well worth all the adventures along the way so it's just kind of a cool place we're gonna go check it out do a little bit of tagging leave our mark on this really cool piece of art in Amarillo, Texas. I think what we're gonna do, we gotta find like, where's my canvas? Where's the, we're gonna see how bad I am at art too. Quack. <laughs> Uber. May you rest in peace. It's over. She broke up with you, bro. It's done. This is where, over. This is where, this is where breakups <laughs> come to. This is, this is where you get serious closure. I did a little bit of tagging back in the day. Uh, afternoon of day number one. Got after some geese this morning. Uh, we try to set up and uh, see if we can't trick a few cranes. Just got set up. Got a pretty good wind. Wish we had it this morning, but uh, got a good wind. Just had a little party pack come in and do it filthy. So if that's any indication how the evening will go. It ought to be fun. Wish us luck. Kill him, guys! Kill him! Yeah. Yes, sir. We just had a group of cranes come in pretty early. Shot looks to be five of them right there. I didn't shoot the gun. I got a little bit of recording of it um, for the footage, but this is actually going to be my first sandhill crane. So I'm about to pick up the gun, try to knock one down, then focus more on footage later. So I'm excited. I'm ready to knock down one of these dinosaurs. I've always wanted to do it. It's always been one of those things for me growing up in Texas that everybody kind of looks forward to as like a dream bird. So being from Texas, living in Montana, coming back down to shoot these cranes is gonna be pretty special for me. So let's see if I can't do it. All right, so we just finished up a short hunt afternoon of day one. Uh, got ourselves a couple of Sandhill Cranes. Unfortunately, we only had one group that really came in and did it, and Kayam happened to be filming, of course. And so, Logan and I are officially checking the Sandhill Crane off. We're gonna have to work hard to get Kayam one. Uh, they said the cranes haven't really been wanting to work well this year, but super cool species. Um, of the many, many waterfowl species across the world, they're one of, the only one I'm actually aware of, besides the, in the coot family, that doesn't have a webbed foot. Um, so pretty interesting. Um, these guys drink a ton of water. Toby was explaining to us earlier, you know, if you if you let them hang out in the playas too long, they'll they'll drink up all the water and blow your duck roost. Um, unique features about these birds, obviously really long beak. You can see I've got a little bit more of an adult bird here. The one uh, Logan has is a juvenile. The difference you can see mainly is in the head. And so this part here on this bird, it's uh, quite a bit more red. There's a lot more feathers on the top of that juvenile. And this one also has a little bit of rust, maybe a lot of iron in its diet. And so kind of unique features about this bird. They're super cool. Um, rib, rib eye of the sky. <laughs> and so we'll, we'll, we'll do, uh, clean these birds up and, and show the difference of that. But uh, super cool birds. Excited to get these checked off back in the home state. So now we got to get Kaim on one. Rain steaks. Mm. Oh, nice. 
Well, that did not go as expected. Um, everybody else shot. I think everyone got a crane. We got five total tonight. Sucks because it's the one species that I really wanted to get. I was really excited about it. I don't know what's in store for tomorrow morning and evening hunt. Maybe we get on crane, maybe we don't, I don't know. But um, it's the way it's gonna kind of be on this project, I mean, there's three of us, we're technically marking off this species, but I'm getting left behind a little bit on a species that I really wanted. Um, potential to catch up later on in the series, but uh, tonight I'm just gonna cry a little bit in my bed when everyone's asleep. So, uh, but we'll get, to, we'll get to eat these sandhill crane. It was cool seeing them come in and I got a wide angle shot, not even the best shot. I thought we were gonna really get into them when we started there, but uh, hours later, just watching the birds fly around us. So just one of those days, it just happens. All right, guys, day number two, the road to 100. Uh, it is a frosty, cold morning with zero wind. Uh, I'm hunting an edge of a milo field. Decoys out in front of us in a winter wheat field. Uh, there's been a lot of cranes and geese, so kind of got a little, little bit of a mixed spread today. Uh, hoping that the cranes come give us a look early and then we'll pull the cranes out most likely and change gears and get after the geese. But uh, as of right now, it is very frosty, very cold and no wind. So uh, we got everything against us that we could have against us. Uh, Let's hope that sun comes up, burns our frost off before things start moving too much, but uh, we'll see how it all plays out. Uh, might have a chance at redemption here. Redemption arc win, complete. I was seriously worried I wasn't going to get a crane. That was fourth quarter <laughs> Michael Jordan right there. That first shot was <sighs> sketchy, wasn't it? Huh? It was. Yeah, well, that's my first yeah. shell of this trip, so. <laughs> Two days in Amarillo, and uh, I was uh, just really trying to play up the arc here, the plot of this film. Uh, we had one volley yesterday of cranes, and I was filming, didn't get in on it. I cried all last night thinking that I wasn't going to get one of these. Thankfully, this morning was an absolute just skunk. And uh, this afternoon we came out and we had two of these guys slip up and I was able to put one down and CJ and me hit the other one. So we got two down total, but for me, this is my first ever crane. Being a Texan, this is like one of those magical creatures that you dream about in the piney woods. You're like, man, a crane would be awesome. But uh, I'm just glad I got to knock this off. I was getting really worried. This was fourth quarter. I'm glad it came together. Um, it's always nice when a story comes together, but this is, it's going to be kind of a thing that you'll see in this series. Some of us may not get birds and like today we sacrificed a smacking goose hunt to come and shoot two cranes, but I was able to check this off for me personally. Just glad Toby and the outfit was willing to work with us a little bit and these guys were patient with me to get this bird. So super fortunate to have that come together last minute and, uh, now it's off to the next one. You didn't f*** it up. <laughs> okay, so we've been here a couple days with Toby and the Cadillac Creek crew. Um, I'm gonna fully, full disclosure here, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not a chef, so quit judging me. Um, the guys have already been giving me crap, but what we're gonna do is we're going to take a couple of our crane breasts here, and we're going to butterfly them. You wanna cut against the grain as such, and then we're gonna just do light seasoning with some salt, some pepper, some garlic. And then we're just gonna pan sear them. Do about 70, 80 seconds on either side or so. You don't wanna overcook any waterfowl meat for those of you who have not done this before. They can get real gamey in a hurry. But this is the old ribeye of the sky. And we are going to enjoy ourselves a little crane appetizer. 
Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'll get you some of that. Whoa, <laughs> easy. Is that salt <laughs> totally was. I'm bringing it back. Yes, chefs. Smart guy. <laughs> Ooh. Thank you, Kansa. Surprise, are you trying to say Brian's a bad chef? I'm saying we're all bad chefs. Cheers, cheers. cheers. Cranes. Mmm, yeah. Really good. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's the right amount of garlic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's really good, yeah. This is the way you're supposed to eat, too. It's supposed to be like decent. Decent on brand. Yeah. yeah. It's perfect. Good. The MV, yeah, with the sheer. This one I did a little bit longer. Good stuff. This truly is the <laughs> ribeye of the scar. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It good. Looks good. Mm-hmm. Tastes like a ribeye. I mean, there you go. I do. Boom, done. Plain is simple, huh? I need one no, more. Yeah. All right, everybody, hope you enjoyed that. As always, we love going back home to Texas. But without further ado, let's pick a winner for this past giveaway. We're giving away a RW Coolidge shell bag as well as our hats that everybody seems to just love. These are coming back in stock, hopefully this coming week. But let's pick a winner. Um, Brody Olkers, I think I'm pronouncing that right. O-E-L-K-E-R-S. Brody, congratulations, buddy. You have won yourself an RW Coolidge shell bag as well as a uh, Road to 100 hat. Super stoked for you, bud. Congratulations. This week, I will tell you exactly what we're going to be doing for the giveaway a little bit later. Um, let's dive into that episode. Um, going home to Texas is so much fun. Uh, you know, Kaim and I are both from East Texas, so quite a bit different than the panhandle, but being able to go and, and, and hunt uh, the cranes specifically, even though it was a little bit of a tough hunt, um, it's always fun. I grew up kind of getting to go out there a good bit. And so I've been on some great crane hunts this year, kind of, as everybody knows across every flyway, it was just tough. And so we had a great lesser hunt, um, got on a bunch of birds there and then we, we struggle bust. And, and I don't know if you could feel how much anxiety was actually there, especially for Kayam, but we didn't know if it was going to happen. And, and we realized that's going to be the case as we go throughout this journey. There's just some species that are going to be harder to get than others. And we weren't expecting it to be that hard to get to the grain. And, and we were only there for two days. So it was a quick turnaround kind of a hunt. But uh, super stoked to get it checked off. If you haven't gone on a Sandhill Crane hunt, strongly recommend you get with Toby over there at Cadillac Creek. We'll put all his contact info Um great operation they've got a brand new lodge that we didn't get to stay in because um, they were still finishing up but first class operation i've been to a, a lot of different outfitters across the country and the world um and and toby and his crew they've got it dialed in so um if you're looking to hunt some some lesser canadas and sand hill cranes you will not be disappointed and we look forward to look forward to hopefully getting home with those guys again so we'll see how things shake out but um you know i think that What's cool about this episode is we're, we're kind of just over the halfway point of season one, and we, we've had a lot of great learnings and takeaways up to this point in the journey. And so um, we, we were fortunate, like I said, there were so many people that struggled this waterfowl season on, on getting birds just because of that abnormal weather we had. And it felt like we, we got lucky most of the time. And so uh, we were super fortunate to, to be able to, to have as much luck as we did to get these episodes put together for you guys. And, and hopefully you're enjoying them all, but you know, it's, it's just, that's how it goes. That's waterfowl hunting. And, and, you know, we, we're, we're trying to struggle through my filming. As you can see the, the stuff that, that didn't come out so great was because Kaim had to be on the gun and I'm still trying to learn this videography stuff. I'm a decent, you know, photographer, but, um, it's just one of those deals where, it's it's a struggle and that's part of the journey and i think that the the road to 100 embodies that in so many different ways is what we're learning is none of this is is easy it takes a lot of luck um and we're just grateful to be able to do this and show you guys so um anyways without further ado 
Um, we are going to, uh, oh, actually, before I, do, before I announce this giveaway, we had an awesome podcast with Toby. And so a week from today, the launch of this film, um, we'll drop that podcast with Toby. And guys, we covered all sorts of cool stuff. I mean, if you don't know who Toby is, um, he obviously sports a pretty awesome handlebar mustache, as I do. Um, so mad respect for that. Um, his tattoos tell some pretty amazing stories. And he's just had a super interesting walk of life and how he's ended up to where he is today back in West Texas as an outfitter um, and probably one of the better outfitters in the country. And so super cool to, to get to sit down with him in that podcast and, and learn more about his backstory and how he came to be where he's at today. Had some great conversation around religion. You know, the the launch of this episode is um, on Easter. And so I think the timing's perfect to, to put that message out there. Um, whether you're religious or not, um, whether you have a, a belief in a higher being, um, we do. And that's important to us. And we talk about that in this podcast. So please take some time, listen to that. It pairs up really nicely with uh, the episode you just watched. And here we go. Another giveaway. So because we love Apex Ammunition so much, we are going to give away another case of Apex Steel Ammo. Um, so that is going to be a big part of it as well. Our great partner, RW Coolidge. We're going to have another lanyard. These things are sweet. They're these leather braided custom lanyards that they're doing right now. Really love ours. Um, they've held up great, awesome, nostalgic feel to them. And this one I'm super excited about. We've given away um, the duck tote strap before, but you're about to see soon. We're, we're getting closer to launching our website. We're going to give away this duck strap. This is brand new. But now the ones we're going to sell on the website have the Road to 100 logo on them as well on this side. And then the RW Coolidge logo on the other. These are fantastic. We've used them all over the world. Um, they're in the blind bag with us always. But these are the items up for grab. So make sure you go below, click the link, um, you know, comment, let us know what you guys think. We, we love all the support. Like you guys keep us going in those comments with all the, um, the support you give us and, and the praise. And, and we really do hope you're enjoying watching this journey that we're so fortunate to be able to be on. So anyways, appreciate it guys. Best of luck to whoever wins this giveaway. Brody, we'll be in contact with you. Enjoy the episode and enjoy podcast next week.